We are going to talk about metabolic adaptation and weight loss plateaus. Now, as you diet and your body weight decreases, the number of calories that you require will also decrease. This means that inevitably people hit a weight loss plateau and probably freak out and lose their shit. But logically speaking, it makes perfect sense. If you start out at 100 kilos and you diet down to 80 kilos, of course you don't need to consume as many calories now as you did when you started. However, there is something called adaptive thermogenesis, and this is when your metabolic requirements in terms of calories decreases disproportionately to your body weight drop. For example, if you start out at 100 and you diet down to 80, but your metabolic rate is lower than someone who has always been 80 kilos. So how much of a difference does adaptive thermogenesis make? And what can you do to maximize your chances of success? So before we start, there's a little primer on metabolism. I've borrowed this from a study. So what you're looking at is basal metabolic rate. So your basal metabolism comes in the form of resting energy expenditure. If you're lying down and sleeping, your body is still burning calories, living, breathing, etc. Then you have non-resting energy expenditure, which is broken down into exercise activity thermogenesis, i.e. the number of calories you burn through formal exercise, such as a gym workout, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, calories burnt through movement but not formal exercise, fidgeting, doing what I'm doing now, and then the thermic effect of food, the metabolic cost of eating. Now, for us to look at adaptive thermogenesis in its extreme form, it makes sense to look at an extreme weight loss trial. So if we take the Minnesota starvation experiment, this had humans pushing the boundaries of how lean they could get. At the end of the trial, their metabolic rate had dropped by 40%, which seems huge, but their body weight had dropped by 25%. They'd lost a quarter of their body weight. So adaptive thermogenesis only accounted for a 15% decrease in metabolic rate, which suddenly doesn't seem that scary when you consider that they were literally pushing the boundaries of human leanness. And also to put this into context, these individuals weren't weight training and they weren't consuming a high protein diet. They weren't doing everything they could to maximize lean body mass retention. So it's logical that for most people, adaptive thermogenesis isn't going to be as extreme as it was in this trial. But what it does mean is that once they hit their goal weight or their low weight or whatever you want to call it, their metabolic rate is suppressed. So does this mean that if you diet down and you hit your goal weight, your metabolic rate is suppressed? Let's take uh, data from another trial. I've, I've carved these charts out and I'll put them over my face. Now, what you see here, if you look at the first group of columns, the green column is people who are at their usual weight. Then it compares the blue and yellow column to people who had lost 10% or more of their body weight recently, five to eight weeks, and then in a sustained manner and they've maintained it for over a year. What you'll notice is that people who have lost body weight even five to eight weeks or a year, still have suppressed metabolism compared to people who are at their usual body weight. Then if you go into the second group of columns and the third columns, you see that the biggest discrepancy comes from non-resting energy expenditure, not resting energy expenditure. So basal metabolic requirements don't seem to decrease as much as those which come from non-resting energy expenditure. Now, if I pull up another chart, what this does is compares predicted energy expenditure values based on body weight, and then observed energy expenditure. Now, if you look again in the first group of columns, those who've lost body weight to hit the same target weight as those who are at their usual weight, their metabolic requirements are over 400 calories less. So in the first group of column, in the first group of columns, you will see that the blue and the yellow are over 400 calories less than the green. So even people who have sustained weight loss for a year still have lower metabolic requirements. Then if you go to the second group into resting energy expenditure, you see there's still a discrepancy there. However, the biggest discrepancy actually comes in the third group of columns, non-resting energy expenditure. So what does this mean? The biggest metabolic suppression, if you will, comes from non-resting energy expenditure, calories that you burn through movement not necessarily resting energy expenditure. Now, this is twofold. Number one, you become more efficient. When you're lighter and you do the same activity, you will burn fewer calories than you did when you were heavier. That means if, for example, you do a five mile run every day, as your body weight goes down, 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 the number of calories that you burn will also decrease. You become more efficient. 
However, there is also a decrease in non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which basically means that as you get leaner and leaner and leaner, you may find yourself moving about less. So people that push the boundaries of human leanness will normally attest to this. So ask any bodybuilder or someone who's really got super, super lean, and they will say that they found themselves getting lazy. So for me, if I'm in photo shoot condition, when I come home, instead of moving around the house and doing stuff, the first thing I do is sit down. And when I'd normally sit down at the table and do my work, I'd find myself lying on the sofa and doing it from my phone. And I would move less and less and less. This means that to overcome a suppression in metabolism, one of the key things that you can do is make sure that you keep moving. So for example, if you use a pedometer daily, you may notice that as you get leaner, the number of steps you take subconsciously will decrease. So if you make a target effort to keep your non-exercise activity thermogenesis high, you will help overcome some of the adaptive thermogenesis component, the suppression in metabolism. So that's it. Something that you can do, a strategy that you can implement to help overcome the dreaded metabolic adaptation and starvation mode that a lot of people are testing. So I hope you found it helpful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter's best friend. My Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. Thank you for watching. Bye.